Hello and welcome to our lesson on ionic formulae. In our previous lesson, we looked at ionic bonding. Ionic bonding involves the transfer of electrons between positive metals and negative non-metals to form strong electrostatic attraction. And it's that strong electrostatic attraction that holds these ionic compounds together. So the next section then is talking about ionic formulae, but trying to understand why magnesium with oxygen is one magnesium and one oxygen. But when we bond magnesium with fluorine, it's one magnesium and two fluorines. What's going on? OK, well, let's look at lithium and chlorine together. Lithium has a formula, uh, an ionic formula of plus one. It's going to lose one electron and chlorine wants to gain one electron. And therefore, what will happen if these two come into contact and react is that electron will move across to the chlorine and now they're both stable. So the plus one and the minus one, they're both stable. I need one lithium and one chlorine. And therefore, the formula to make both of these stable is going to be LiCl. I just need one of each. What about magnesium and oxygen, magnesium oxide? So magnesium wants to lose two electrons and oxygen wants to gain two electrons. Well, that works perfectly, doesn't it? This magnesium is going to hand over both its spare electrons to this oxygen. So one magnesium and one oxygen together are going to make two stable ions. So this ionic compound is MgO, one of each. But what happens when I've got something like lithium that only wants to lose one electron but oxygen that wants to gain two electrons. Well, this lithium will give its electron to oxygen. Now, lithium is stable, but oxygen still isn't stable. It still needs another electron. So what will happen is that another lithium will also transfer its electron. So it actually takes two lithiums to balance one oxygen. And so the formula is Li2O. Now you'll notice what I'm trying to do is trying to get this to a plus two and this to a minus two. So I want to get those balanced there. I've only got a plus one here. So plus one, plus one, that's plus two now. That's a minus two. So they kind of balance each other out. And that's why there's no pluses or minuses here because the formula has balanced, balanced itself out. Okay, what about this one here? Well, magnesium wants to lose two electrons and calcium only needs to gain one in order to become stable. So magnesium will transfer one electron across to this chlorine. Now, this chlorine is now stable. It doesn't need any more and it will not take any more. Otherwise, it becomes unstable again. But magnesium is still not stable. It's still got one extra electron. And therefore, we can bring in another chlorine who will also take that electron. And now magnesium is stable and both these chlorines are stable. So to make this compound work, I need one magnesium and two chlorines. So if you think about what we said earlier, I've got a plus two, and now I've got minus two, because I've got two of these. Plus two, minus two, we're balanced, we're all right. And so the formula for magnesium chloride would be MgCl2. Now, if you get confused with trying to work out ionic formula, there is another method called the drop and swap method. Don't really like teaching it. You don't really understand why it's working, but it does work every time. So if you're struggling, um, this is a good one. So you've got here Mg2 plus and Cl1 minus. They're your ions. So what's the formula going to be? Well, you drop the letters, so Mg and Cl, and then you swap the numbers. So this becomes Mg1. And this becomes Cl2. Notice there's no pluses or minuses because we lose those charges. Or you would just write MgCl2. And this works every time. OK, I'd like you to pause the video and have a go at these questions for me. Either use um, the, the longer method I showed you or use the swap and drop method. Um, you'll need a periodic table for this. OK, so. If you didn't have a periodic table, you could pause before we get to the product for each one and see if you can figure it out. But lithium is going to be a plus one. It's group one plus one. And oxygen is group six. So it's going to be minus two. So if you've done the swap and drop method or if you've done the longer method, you should end up with a formula of Li2O. Calcium 
is Ca plus 2 and oxygen is O minus 2 and therefore the product will be CaO. Beryllium is group 2 so plus 2, fluorine is group 7 so it's going to be F minus 1 and the formula will be BeF2. Potassium is group 1 so plus 1, sulphur is group 6 so minus 2, the formula or the product would be K2S. Aluminium is group 3, so plus 3. Chlorine is group 7, so minus 1. And the formula would be AlCl3. Now this last one, if you can get it, you've done really well. This is the hardest they get. So aluminium is plus 3. Oxygen is minus 2. So this, if you worked out the drop and drop method, this would work really easily. If you weren't sure, you have to basically find the common multiple of this, which is 6. And so you'd end up with Al2O3. OK, so we need to know how to draw a dot and cross diagram. How do we do that? Well, usually a dot and cross diagram, we're drawing the afterwards. So this is before, and I'll tell you when we get to the afterwards. So I'll tell you what you would actually draw, but I want to show you what I'm doing here. So here's lithium and fluorine, as you can tell. Um, and you know, you can see exactly what's going to happen here. This lithium is going to transfer its electron across to fluorine. So let me just get rid of the outer energy level. So what would you actually draw for an ionic dot and cross diagram? Well, this is the after, isn't it? So lithium has got this full outer energy level because it's the only one left. And I'm going to put a bracket around it. And I'm going to put a bracket around this one here with the extra electron. And most importantly, I'm going to put my charge. This is plus one because it's lost one electron. And this is minus one because it's gained one electron. And you can see now why it's called a dot and cross diagram, because it's really obvious that that cross has come from the lithium because the crosses are the lithium and the dots are the fluorine. Now, interestingly, I've forgotten to do the inner dots on the fluorine there. Never mind. OK, so what about this one here? Well, hopefully you would recognise that lithium is going to transfer that electron. So this lithium is stable. So I'm going to put it in brackets plus one. It's lost that one electron. Um, is oxygen stable? No, it still needs another one. So here's another lithium coming in. I'm donating its electron. That lithium there is now stable plus one. And this oxygen is going to be minus two because it has gained two electrons. So what do you actually draw in an exam question? That's what you're drawing the after, um, the ions with the brackets. I always think the brackets look kind of like an eye. So when I think of ionic bonding, I think, oh, it's the one with the brackets. I need the brackets and I need the positive and the negative charges. And those positive and the negative charges need to add up. So I've got two plus ones, that's plus two, and I've got a negative two. So it's balanced. Finally, then, could you look at these formulae and tell me if they're ionic or other? So MgO, that's a metal and a non-metal, so that's ionic. H2O, that is a non-metal and a non-metal, so that's not ionic. We've got calcium, which is a metal, and chlorine, which is a non-metal, so that's ionic. Yes, calcium is a metal. I've got CO2, so that's two non-metals, so that's not ionic. And I've got S, which is sulfur and chlorine, two non-metals, so that's also not ionic. And here I've got iron and I've got oxygen, and so that's a metal and non-metal, that's ionic. Ionic compounds always have a positive metal and a negative non-metal. So you should be able to look at a word like magnesium oxide or the formula MgO and know it is ionic because you have a metal and a non-metal. That's the end of this lesson today, guys. I'll see you next time.